opportunity back here for another MMW test. Today I'm videotaping a MMW test of my XL15 hydrogen dry cell. It's a 16 plate by 6 by 6 dry hydrogen fuel cell using 20 gauge stainless steel. Two tablespoons of KOH per gallon for this test brings my amperage up to about 30 amps at 13.8 volts. Uh, I've got the connections at positive, neutral, four neutrals, negative, four neutrals, positive, four neutrals, negative in this configuration for this test. So I'm going to pause here and set up my power supply to get my correct voltages and amperage and I'll take a quick shot of that and then we'll do an MMW test with my leader. Okay, meter. here we are at my Mastec 30 volt, 30 amp power supply which I used to do all my bench testing with. Right now we're getting up to the 30 amps that I want to run the cell at. You can see it's at 13.8 volts to the right, 27.5 amps right now, and that should rise by the time I'm ready to do the shoot. So I'm just going to take a pause here, and I'm going to show you the configuration really quick. Here's a shot of the um, shrink solder terminals actually attached to the cell. You can see how I have everything configured. It starts with a positive, then goes to a negative, back to a positive, and then another negative. I'm going to pause again and show you the amperage spread across the plates with my clamp on meter. Okay, as you can see, I just put my clamp meter on real quick and I'm getting 30 amps to the cell. I'm going to back off and go ahead and run the MMW test and we'll see how many liters it's producing. Look at the cell while it's running. I don't know if you can see this, but you're getting some pretty good production out of the outlet side of the cell right there. I'm going to zoom in and see if we can catch it here. I don't know if you can see it or not in the video. Anyway, I'm going to do the MMW test next. Okay, as is my custom, I want to show you the liter bottle that I'm using. It is a one liter. It's a bottle of Smart Water, which fits my HHometer very nicely. I'm going to go ahead and pause for a second. I'm going to slip this into my HHometer. I want to show you also the nozzle on it. Uh, it has holes drilled in it, for those of you who haven't seen my other videos. These holes allow the water and the gas to exit, which allows the water bottle to be submersed in the water and if you haven't seen these tests before we use a water bottle empty water bottle to be displaced with the HHO to measure how many liters of HHO we're getting per minute out of our cells it's a very accurate test as I've said before um, that shows you how much your dry cell is producing or your hydrogen cell for that matter is producing flow meters give an inaccurate reading because we don't have the P enough PSI to actually get a good reading on them. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how I put this uh, bottle in the HHometer. Before I put the uh, bottle in the HHometer I just want to recap my setup here. Um, there's my bubbler which is ABS 4 inch with a, a gas out right there. Gas in and, and uh, cell recirculation is at the base there. This is a closed system. The hydrogen circulates out the front into the base of the bubbler and then there's another fitting in the back which recirculates the hydrogen um, electrolyzer which is KOH in this case back to the cell which helps the cell run cooler and more efficiently. Um, I want to recap my HHometer for you. I handcrafted it out of acrylic. Here's the base here which has got some acrylic knobs. I tapped out a 90 degree barb fitting underneath there. The knobs help raise the base of the HHometer off the ground so the barb fitting and hose can go underneath. Then I think it's a two and a half inch acrylic diameter tubing with an inner tube connected to the barb fitting, a small what we call straw going to the barb fitting and that raises up to the water level. I'm going to pause this and show you the water bottle in the right, HHometer. I'm going to demonstrate uh, how I displace the air in the bottle right now and force the water through it and that water is what we're going to displace with the hydrogen to get our reading. As I push down on the bottle, the air removes out of the holes and the water displaces the air. It's a very sensitive bottle. It'll move at the puff of a breath. If you breathe into the hose, it'll raise the bottle up. So it's very sensitive, very accurate. So you can see I'm filling the bottle all the way up and there it is. All right, before I run the test, I want to do a quick temperature gauge here, let you see what the temps are. Some have asked me what the temperatures of the cell were, and I didn't document it last time, so here we go. 
using a laser handheld Sentec laser reader. Of course it varies, but we're getting about 116 degrees. It's about what it's staying at. You can see that by the meter right there, 117.4. So that's a good operating temperature. The cell has warmed up. So I'm going to pause this, pan back so we can do our HHO test. Okay, we're back, ready for the test. We got 13.8, 13.9 amps, or excuse me, volts to the right. It's going to drop down to 13.8 on your right and 30 amps on the left. Okay, as soon as it gets there, I'm going to start doing this test. It's looking pretty good, so I'm going to hold the stopwatch up on my mark, get set, go. Okay. There we go. You can see the liter meter is rising in the background nicely. And as soon as it fills, I'm going to stop the watch. On my mark, that's it, set. That's it. 30 seconds, 30.4 seconds. You get one liter. You can see the uh, liter bubble in there. That means all the gas has escaped. You can see it's very good production on this cell. You can see by the turbulence in that uh, HHometer, and we're getting good production out of this thing. So I'm pretty happy. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do another test on a five neutral plate design, which would make this a 19 plate cell, and see what our efficiencies are. So thanks for watching. I'm going to do an MMW test. I'll post this with a video. And go Hydro 2.